Last episode, our defensive woes continued, and you might remember James Mace, key player James Mace. Remember this moment from him, perhaps his best moment during my time in charge? Occasionally, he's immediately lost the ball. They're now launching it for James Mace. Mate, you're 38 years old. Can you not see the football coming down out the air? They've scored. I'm fine. Yeah, I hope you drank that in. That is the last you're ever going to see of him. The man who was once upon a time the key player when I first joined the club is no longer here. I want to sit here and say, I got rid of him. Not not true in the slightest. He just left to go to Staines. He's not even on a contract where they're paying him any money, but he decided he would rather be involved in Staines' non-league affairs than battle in the relegation zone with us. And I do there say battle in the relegation zone because a few weeks ago, we did find ourselves down in 17th place and our name was lit up in red. Since then, though, our fortunes have turned around a little bit, and perhaps that is for the best, because today we've got two games. Bedworth United, our local fierce rivals, who are currently in second, away from home, and after that we take on Colesville Town, who are bottom. These are two games I'd love to win. If we lose both of them, it's a disaster class. If we can get three points, it's probably enough. Ultimately, today really is going to set the tone for the season. And on top of all of that, you might have noticed we've got a new key player, and I have signed... Another six new players. Yeah, let's run the intro and get into things. <laughs> yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Part 2 Prem. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Let's talk transfers. So, of course, we have now lost James Mace, who is our key player. We've also lost Tom Fielding, who was one of our better striking options. On top of that, one further player has departed in Dan Summerfield. You might remember this guy was on £300 a week. It was a silly amount of money for a club of our size to be paying. As a result, he's left to join North Therapy. So with his departure, we have actually got still more excess wage budget. We have reinvested immediately, and we're now at a point where almost all of our starting squad, or at least a good chunk of our starting squad, are actually on proper deals, which is nice. I suppose logically a good place to start is with the new key player. It's another striker. We now have three really good top quality strikers in Callum Gillen, Jackson Davis, Mikhev Voy, and I guess on top of that, you've also got David. David actually got player of the month in the whole league in January, so if I could play four strikers, I probably would at this point. But circling back onto Gillen, another Irish player in our ranks. I've noticed now that between Callum and Rio, we have two young Irish players who both face off to the side in the face pack. Is, is that an Irish thing I don't know about? No idea. Callum, though, is a quick player with first. 13 finishing, some really good dribbling, decent ability in the air. He scored on his debut in our most recent game on off the bench. I've got quite high hopes for him. For those of you that wanted to see a new goalkeeper, breathe a sigh of relief. I've signed one for the big bucks. I say it's £100 a week. But in our kind of situation, that's still not insignificant. We have here Evan Ovendale. He has only played one game for us. He didn't keep a clean sheet in it. We, in fact, drew that game where he played. If we compare him with Matt Hill, who was previously our goalkeeper... He's a massive upgrade, so I'm going to hope that this solves some of our problems, because let's be frank, Matt Hill was bloody awful. Now, naturally, with James Mace leaving the club, we needed some new centre-backs. We picked up two. The first of those, not the most exciting of signings. Regan Mendes here, 30 years old, centre-back, wellish rounded, really coming to be a bit of a backup option on £50 a week. And the player who I'm excited about, the player in the thumbnail, Jake Cartwright. This guy used to play for Stoke. Can you tell? He's got jumping reach. He's got aggression. He's got bravery. He's got 13 heading. He is our non-league set-piece weapon. I mean, just being real for a moment, 16 jumping reach with 13 heading at this level is absolutely immense. Combine that with 10 strength. I'm hoping he's going to be a little bit of a battering ram for us. He's already got one goal in two games. You might have noticed he has signed for the next two and a half years on £40 a week. Honestly, this might be the best transfer I've done so far in charge. Friendship with James Mace ended. Jake Cartwright is my new best friend now. I did sign a slightly less exciting defending option in Kean B. This guy is, well, he's just a guy who can play left back and right back to sit on the bench. Yeah, uh, you're not going to be seeing much of him. I hope. If, if you see a lot of him, things have gone wrong. And you might have noticed with all those new additions, I've not signed any new midfielders. Fret not, we have picked up one. That man, Ethan Hilton, 19 years old, the jack of all trades, the master of none. Uh, yeah, he's got lots of sevens, eights, nines and tens and not a lot else. But you know what? For a centre midfielder who needs to do everything, I think that's fine. Now, last episode, we lost 4-1. Since then, 
We've not lost a game. Saying that, just because we've not lost in our last three doesn't mean we've been good. Rushton and Diamonds down in the relegation zone drew with us 4-4. They got an equaliser in the 87th minute. To be fair, this was a game where we rode at our luck a little bit. You'll notice that at this point, lots of the new players hadn't really come in. I gave Tyler Forbes a start. He got a 6.5 rating. It's a minor cause for concern. After that, though, an emphatic win. David Kolondinsky, take a bow, my son. He picked up a hat-trick in this game as we won 5-1. Goals have been hard to come by, but it was nice to see players like Azam running down the win, playing it inside, and then Jackson Davis capping off the move. In fact, Jackson Davis, the former Forest youngster in this game, would grab two of his own. Hilton as well, doing his job, the new centre mid, playing it forward. And to be frank... We actually look remarkably competent in this game. Like, I, 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 it's a shame we couldn't keep a clean sheet. We conceded in the last minute. But we actually scored five goals, which we scored four the previous game and didn't win. Turns out the golden amount of goals we need to win football matches here at Rugby Town is five. Yeah, that was a good finish by Jackson Davis for the fifth. Most recently, we took on Anstey Nomads. They are up in the playoffs, up in fifth. So actually, 2-2, not a terrible result. We got a late goal through Callum Gillen that pulled us level. Shout out to him. On off the bench on his debut, he starts our first game today. Like I mentioned, we did dip our toes into the relegation zone. We now find ourselves one point ahead of it. I promise the board a top half finish. To do that, we need to overturn an eight-point deficit on the likes of Cambridge City in the next 12 games, which does feel slightly unlikely. Now, you might have actually noticed, looking at the recent games, there has been a minor formation change, and that formation change is this. I call it the anchor. Uh, we had an issue. The three strikers were a little bit isolated, but I didn't really have a midfielder who could, I don't know, stitch the lines together. Hilton has come in and been that man for us. He has no concept of defensive midfielder. I am training him to play there so that we may be able to use him there down the line. But I've actually been deploying him as an advanced playmaker, which... I mean, don't get me wrong, he's not great at it, but he's as good at it as any other role. And so far, he has gotten an assist and played okay in this position. The former Lincoln City man, a player who I'm hoping is going to be the link-up player. We've scored loads of goals as of late. Two goals in the most recent game, five goals before that, four goals before that. The goals are starting to flow... Now we just need to solid things up defensively. Speaking of which, of course, we've got Cartwright at the back, the new battering ram. We've got Mendes, who, of course, is another new addition. In between them, the assistant manager and Liam Francis wasn't on a deal. He is now. He's agreed to sign for £20 a week for the love of the club. I love Liam. Little bit of news. Left back injury. James Dutton is injured. Who is our left back? Will admit it right now. Dan Summerfield probably would be a useful player to have around, but we don't have him. And with that in mind, we're going with my favourite player in the world, Edwin. Edwin with the last name that I'm scared to say incorrectly, so we just call him Edwin. He's not the most exciting of options. He can play striker. He can play right mid and left back. Yeah, it's a weird mix of positions, I will admit. Elsewhere, David Kolodinski. He's been at the club since he's 14. He's up top alongside Jackson Davis, who did pick up a few goals recently. In fact, when you look at it down here, three goals in four games is absolutely fine for him. And our opposition today are Bedworth, which I've been told is actually said Bedworth, but that doesn't sound correct. Look, the YouTube comment section could be lying to me. It could be Bedworth. I'm going to say Bedworth because it's got a W in it. And like I mentioned, we have got this fierce local rivalry with them. They are in the hunt right now for the automatic promotion spot at the top of the table. We could mud them here, but before we take them on... We need to do an away day. We're going to the Oval, not the cricket ground. Bedworth's ground holds 3,000 fans. Now, I have no idea where Bedworth is, but logically, if there are fierce local rivals, it, ca it can't be that far away, can it? It's probably on my screen here, and I'm just blind. Ladies and gentlemen, I found them. They're north of Coventry. Here they are, Bedworth, just north of the M6. They think they're all Bertie Big Balls over here. We're going to put them in their place but not before I review their stadium. I'm looking for a square bit of grass, assuming that that will be the stadium. I assume this is it here. Is, th is this the oval? Is this the oval? I mean, it looks like it once upon a time could have been an oval shape, so I'm going to say yes. First things first, I have to admit it, quite nice leafy location. Car park, pathetic. Got nothing on Warsaw Wood. They've got a playground next door that looks like it's made of sand. Cricket club, tennis courts. I mean, this all looks very nice. What can you show me on Street View? Okay, we've got some options. Okay, this is the entrance to the football club. There's no KFC in sight for KFC fans out there. But if we go down this road, we can enjoy the stadium. This is from October this year. This is very, very recent footage. 
here is the stadium. Um, yeah, I guess they have this barrier up so you can't just watch the game from, for free from the outside. That is sensible. Oh, I've managed to break into the stadium. Apparently in 2011, there was no door here. So we can get a... Oh, okay, it's, give me a moment. I'm, ne I'm never going to find that same spot, am I, ever again? How did I get to that previous spot? I managed it. Here's the stadium as it was in 2011, before they put up the barrier to stop people watching for free, before they got all big time over in Bedworth. Have to say, quite a nice little main stand for a non-league club. I guess there was some particularly offensive messaging here from the Bedworth Ultras. Uh, yeah, Google just blurred out half the pitch. I'll tell you what, I feel sorry for the Google Street View van. It's been here in 2023, 2017 and 2011. Here it is, midway through the transformation. They put up the fence. They hadn't yet put up the kind of barrier to stop people watching for free. Can I view the stadium from anywhere else? Uh, the answer is not really. How does the cricket club car park look? Is this... I mean, they, I'll be honest, the better car parking than the actual football stadium at the cricket club. If you're going to Bedworth, just, just park here. Hope it doesn't come across as me being rude, but compared to the last away day, this is pathetic, isn't it? I mean, don't get me wrong. Lovely leafy stadium. Adequate car parking, I suppose, but no KFC. Cannot compare to the previous one. And I, I, I don't like the barriers they put to stop me being able to view the pitch. I hold a grudge against them. They're local rivals. Three out of ten. Uh, I, that is a biased rating, I will admit it. Okay, now that I've done slating our local rival stadium, let's get into the game today. Hopefully we can get a good result. Now, I do want to remind you all, they're in second. They are the favourites for this game. We are the underdog away from home. That doesn't mean I'm expecting defeat, just to be absolutely clear. But we, we are a goal down after 22 minutes. I think it's Lee in the middle here who's not picking up his man. The Bermudan international, he looks like he's lost in a triangle as he's tried to win that. That is shocking. Look, we're not going to get rocked straight away. We concede goals. That's what we do. But we also score goals. Teams cannot shut down our strike force. We're going to show it here. Gillen, Azam, he's ghosting inside the right back. He could go on his own. He hits the crossbar. And it settles on the roof of the net. We've got a corner. Where is Jake Cartwright? Look for the pylon at the back post. Where is he? Jake. Jake. There he is. Jake. Okay, he's not won it. I'll be, I've really bigged that up there. Let's look at the positives. We're almost at halftime. It's only 1-0. I've, <laughs> I've signed a new centre-back thinking we're going to be really good now. Look like we're going to concede every time they get a corner. Not what we want to see, but at least on this occasion, the new goalkeeper in Ovendale has actually made a stop. I mean, he has got to prove himself. The goal... Oh, right. <laughs> Jake Cartwright, who can head a ball, he can't pass a football. You've probably seen the thumbnail for this video already. I made it before I recorded this video. I didn't know he was going to do this. I didn't... It, it couldn't go worse for him. Half time, 2-0 down. I mean, besides the whole shooting ourselves in the foot thing, we actually had a pretty good half. I'm going to throw a water bowl. I hope that isn't... Oh, God, I shouldn't have thrown the water bowl. I was about to say, I hope that's not a bad idea. I just feel like we, we can do more here. We can, we can be better. Look at that. I've saved it. Only Evan in goal is upset, and he's furious. And I'm fine with the goalkeeper being angry. I like an angry goalkeeper. Oh, God, they're on the attack again. O'Connor, there's options in the middle. Magunda, inside. O'Connor, don't do it, Lee. Great tackle. Now can we break? The answer is no. Although Cartwright has now actually won a header. That's what I've brought him in to do. Sadly, we can't now get the ball forward. Although, Azam's won it. And now Gillen, Lee. Let's make something happen. Hilton plays it forward. Jackson Dennis. I've still called him Dennis. It's Jackson Davis. I'll, I'll learn his name eventually. It's 2-1. We're back in it. I mean, I wonder the players aren't playing well. I forget all their names. I just say that, I, you know, I was calling our right back Kazam last episode. I'm now calling Jackson Davis Dennis. I mean, he is a menace for Bedworth, that is. It's 2-1. Okay, I'm going to make a change here. David, it's nothing personal, but I'm bringing in Rio. His name is Rio, and he's going to score a goal, I hope. I don't know what just happened there. Uh, elsewhere, Edwin's not played well. You know what? B, I said there was a problem if you're coming on. You're coming on here. Good luck, son. If nothing else, we've been quite competitive in this game. It's 1-1 if you ignore the goal that we gave them, which was very charitable of us, if not quite what we needed to do. There's 25 minutes left. We've got more and more strikers on the pitch. I'm going to ask our players to go more direct here, I think, now in our attempt to get a goal. We've got 20 minutes to try and make it happen. Ah, uh, Callum Gillen, you know, new, new key player. 
injured. It's his first ever start for the club. Uh, Tyler Forbes is on the bench today. Tyler, come on down, son. Ten minutes left. It's still 2-1 to them. I feel, I feel like I've got to do some more attacky stuff here. Although, we're already quite an attacking team, aren't we, when you look at how we're set up. But we can go, we can go more attacking. B, attack. Azam, attack. Elsewhere, in possession. No more looking for overlap. We want to get the ball quickly. In transition, distribute it over the defence. Just kick it long. In possession, play through the middle, hit early crosses. Get it to the big men. Okay, five minutes left. Bedworth with a throw in on the far side. I'm hoping that injury isn't too serious. Otherwise, that is going to be a bit of a problem with our striking options. I mean, good news. Transfer window's still open. We could sign a few more strikers. I've only signed four so far. That said, we've only scored one goal in this game. But that could change here. Or we could just concede another. They're on the attack again. We put in half a block, but it's not away. Molyneux now with the ball for them. He lays it back to Cox in the wide area. The right back, the number two. Can we stop him getting the ball in? We can. And now we look to break Hilton. Where's Tyler? Tyler's there lurking. The number 18. McAvoy back to Francis. Late. Look at this. Forbes. Tyler pulls the trigger. Hits the crossbar it was meant to be. There's another highlight. The goal kick is another highlight. We're, we're getting momentum. The, the wind is in our sails. I can feel it. The tides are turning here at rugby. Jackson Davis takes down the ball, then loses it. But we've still got it forward. Cartwright doing what he does at Stoke. Launches it forward. Jackson Davis scores. It's offside. I've seen the flag in the bottom right corner. It's still 2-1. Uh, you know what? Good thing about the non-leagues. Don't have to worry about VAR. Bad news in the non-leagues. Uh, we've lost another game. This might sound like I'm just coping. I actually think 2-1's quite a good result there, considering we're playing the team in second. Unfortunately, we've not won. And we play the team who are bottom in our next game. I'm just getting it in my head. Uh, things have gone from bad to worse. We're in the relegation zone. We really need to beat Coles Hill Town in this next game. Callum's out for three weeks. It could be worse. Okay, we take on the team who are bottom in a week. We're doing that game today. I'll join you in a moment. Now, you might have suspected having not won in that last game, I'd sign a load of new players now that we're taking on the team that are bottom, but I'm not going to panic just yet. And the reason I'm not going to panic is because ultimately, we've just lost 2-1 against the team who are currently sat top of the league, a team who have only lost five games all year. Against Anstey Nomads, we drew in the game prior to that. They're up in fourth. Coles Hill Town, who we take on today, are 10 points behind us. If we look at the team's 10 points ahead of us, those teams are as high as seven. So, I know that there's points available. I know that we can get results, but ultimately, this does feel rather pivotal. If we don't win this game at home, we are in trouble. Now, unfortunately, Gillen is still out for this game, so McEnvoy is going to come in to play at centre attacking striker. Centre attacking mid, I was about to say. No, he's playing as a striker. Um, either side of him, though, you might notice some changes. We were previously playing with an advanced forward in the middle. Decided to change that up and actually play with a pressing forward in the middle and two advanced forwards either side. Jackson Davis, I feel like he's a really good advanced forward. I feel like David falls into a similar mould where perhaps doesn't have the work rate and the well-roundedness to play as a pressing forward. And I do look at uh, Rio here and think, actually, as a pressing forward, you are ready made for this. So I'm going to hope he can do the job of two men in the middle. We are in the relegation zone. We need to get some results. We really need to get something out of this game here. Just as a reminder, I don't have the league below the one that we're currently in available to play in this save game. If we get relegated... I will be sacked. And whilst there are games to turn things around, there is no better game than this one against the team who are bottom to try and turn it around. Azam, throw in, near side. Let's make something happen immediately. Let's have a nice chilled out game where the goals flow and we just have good vibes. Late has the ball for them, bringing it forward. Looking up ahead of him, Molesworth is there. The number nine takes it in his stride, pulls the trigger. Also pulls it wide, but that is a concerning first highlight. Evans with the ball at right back, stepping forward with it. They are playing a 4-4-2. We are going to be affording their wide fullbacks a bit of space, but if we can catch them out of position with our strikers forward, I feel like there's an opportunity to make something happen. Unfortunately, we might also need to do some defending. Francis with a nice header. Now Hilton playing it forward to McAvoy. Of course, he is that lone pressing forward. He will drop a little bit more in that role. Lays it wide to David, back with... The Irish player lays it to Hilton, and that is a thunderbolt into the bottom corner. The man who inspired the change in formation to include a centre mid, mostly because he can't play as a defensive mid, has come up trumps. The number seven lurking at the edge pulls the trigger. 
Bang. If I'm not mistaken, that is his first ever career goal. Started his career at Lincoln, never got a goal there. He scored for rugby on his, well, I was going to say his debut. It's his third game. Okay, we need to do some defending now. Late to Dainty. Lays it inside to Willis. They were looking good before we scored. They're looking good here. They've hit the woodwork. Oh my word. Get it away from danger. Set piece for us here. Lee. Where is Jake Cartwright? Look for Cartwright. He is the big meaty man that we're going to be aiming for with pretty much all of our set pieces. Lee over the ball here. What can he do? Plays it forward to, well, the one and only is Edwin. Into the middle and Rio scores. It's 2-0. I was scared there was going to be a flag raised after the last game. It's not been raised. We double our lead. For, for the first time in a live commentary, I, I almost feel relaxed. We've still not won a live commentary game yet. If we didn't do it today, it would be four episodes about it. I'm feeling slightly calmer all of a sudden. I mean, Rio now has a goal and an assist. So maybe the change of the pressing forward in the middle, maybe that was all that was needed. <laughs> I don't think it was. I think it's just that they're quite bad. Half time in this game, they've had eight shots, none on target. They've actually edged out possession, and yet we find ourselves two goals ahead. For all the games so far this year where I've been XG'd as Rugby Town Manager, it's nice to be on the other end of things. Look at this. I've never had such a good team talk. Never seen this much green. Half away with, well, I was going to say a goal kick. It's actually a free kick in their own box, but we're going to win the ball with Cartwright. Now McAvoy to Cartwright. Hilton, he's already got a goal. Confidence is high. Lays it wide to Edwin. He's going to float it towards Jackson Davis. Can't get his header, but we have got them on the back foot. I've not yet made any subs in this game. We're already 20 minutes into the second half. Not been shown any reason for concern yet. Realise I might be tempting fate a little bit as they launch the ball forward. But ultimately, so far, so good. Would love to get another goal. Would love to make it more convincing and also just help our goal difference a little bit. Sadly, with runs forward like that from Azam, we're not going to be scoring more goals. The ball's all the way back with our goalkeeper. This has been a very long highlight. There is a conspiracy theory that the longer a highlight goes on, the bigger the chance of a goal. That ball has just hit Francis on the back. And they've scored. That man is our assistant manager. And he's... I don't know what he's done. I mean, is this just football manager being bad? Like, what What do we put that down to? It's hit Francis on the back. Falls to late. And then... I mean, it's a great finish into the bottom corner. I don't think Livendale's to blame there. It's now 2-1. There's some really sick individuals now willing them to score another goal. I know you're out there, and I'm, I'm worried about it now with 23 minutes left. The fact we've got another highlight immediately. The rain is lashing down. Let's try and turn things around a little bit here. Azam dinks the ball towards Jackson Davis. He is in a wide area. There's players in the middle. Mikavoy is one of them. And he should have scored there from about five yards out. He's pulled it wide. Okay, David's not at the best of games today. So Tyler Forbes, on you come elsewhere. Do I want to make more changes? Cartwright, who I really bigged up with the thumbnail and stuff I made before recording, has been poor. You know what? Steve Bieke, on you come at left centre-back, mate. 15 minutes. I'm just going to encourage the players. It could be an error. It could be genius. The ball's whipped in. Rio is under it. It's maybe going to be cleared away. And now suddenly, do I need to be worried? There's lots of red shirts. I'm worried. I'm panicking. Molesworth lays it wide to Willis. Why have they got so many players forward? Where are our players? Lades through again. Chris Wade scored again for the miss. 2-2. Two, two. It's 2-2. Two, two. What's just happened? I mean, this late player must have about 20 finishing with some of the shooting he's shown in this game here. They have scored two goals in a matter of minutes. From being at one end with a set piece thinking, we're going to get a goal. It's 2-2. Two, two. It's 2-2. Two, two. Azam, please. Make something happen here. Azam. Hilton. Could play it into the middle. Pulls the trigger. I want to criticise him, but he scored one goal already today. There's five minutes left. This team are bottom. We have been arguably, I'd say, the better team on the overall balance of play. It does not show in anything. So Hota on you come. I'm going to two center attack in mids. Desperate times call for des desperate measures. In transition, just launch it over the top. Just go long. Hit early cross. Uh, don't look for overlap. Hit early crosses. Flow those crosses in. Let's get as many players into the middle as we can and go more direct. We need a goal. Five minutes of added time. Is there even going to be a highlight? There is going to be a highlight, please. They're bottom of the league. They're bottom of the league. If we score here, it could be the thing to turn things around. Hilton gets dispossessed. We've got so many players forward here. We are leaving ourselves open, and yet I feel like I have to go for it. A win feels necessary. Sahota, Hilton, lays it forward. Tyler Forbes pulls the trigger. Tyler Forbes, the Park to Prem legend. 
does a cartwheel. He's jubilant. So am I. It's free too. I've punched my screen by accident. That's when you know things are going well. I, I have my head in my hands. I'm thinking it's game over. It's not going to happen. Come if the man, come if the moment. And uh, before the game resumes, just need to tell our centre mids, just, just go back, please, lads. Uh, wing backs, you can go and defend. We just, we need to see out the next, how many minutes was it? Like two minutes? Neither of them can play as ball-winning midfielders. They can now. Okay, game, just finish this match for me. Finish this match. Why is there another highlight? We've got, we can make it 4-2. We can make it look really convincing. Penalty ref, he's given it. Let's make it 4-2. Let's make it look like it was really easy. No one's going to look at the breakdown of who scored when. They'll see 4-2 against the team who are bottom and go, they must have done well. McAvoy's going to step up for it. Rio bangs it in. It's 4-2. It was never in doubt. I'll tell you what, we've got bloody lucky. <laughs> It is 4-2. We've got to win, everyone. I'm so happy right now. I told the players, win or not, that was a poor performance. They're all upset and confused and demotivated. You boss the midfield. I'll just praise them all now. Ah, they're all confused. I guess it's better they're confused than demotivated, right? Never mind. N never mind. Rio, man of the match. He had been not great prior to that game during his time for us, but he's got two goals and an assist. And all of a sudden, he looks like he's played well for us, which, I mean, he hadn't in his first five. He has there. And with that result, we're out of the relegation zone and we're back where we started the episode. We're in 15th. I will say, looking ahead, win a couple of games, you could find yourself back in mid-table and suddenly things don't seem all that terrible. I'm actually kind of happy with how we're playing at the moment. Like, I know this game finished 4-2. They scored from both their shots on target. I mean, maybe that's a poor reflection on the goalkeeping yet again. But ultimately, I do think we deserve to win that game against Coles Hill Town. I did mention earlier on in the series that I would be doing a video covering this database. The database isn't actually ready for release yet. I was hoping it would be ready for the weekend, but there's lots of work being done still to add all the missing data for tiers 9 and 10. As a result of that, whenever the database is ready, there will be a video. It should be sometime this week. In the intermission, fret not. We are going to be settling it into a daily Park to Prem routine each and every weekday, midday UK time. Come here, sit down, get some food, get your coffee in the morning if you're watching in America. Stick me on as you fall asleep if you're in Australia. There is more of this adventure to commence. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for it. Until next time, take things easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you in a bit. I'm out.